it's a kind of a software. Most of the software may be gathered unconsciously, but it is a certain kind of software which holds this together. It stays in a limbo for that kind of period. If it has already become very feeble, it will try to find another form, physical form. So once you don't have a physical body, the time-space experience is not the same. It just snowballs into paranoia. Paranoia not like as human… living human beings know. Paranoia which grows into a million, billion folds. Well, uh, about when you said before being born and uh, after the death process has happened, see, death is a social thing. It is not existentially right to say death. We were talking about bubbles as an analogy, let's continue that bubble. So right now you've blown that big bubble. This bubble has a material, the soap. Depending upon the soap quality, the tenacity of the bubble and how long it lasts is determined by the type of soap and the quality of soap and whatever. So this soap or this structure for this is what we are traditionally referring to as karma. What karma means is accumulated memory which is giving us a shape and a form. So as long as this karmic memory is there, it will contain this life inside. So suppose now, let's say I die. <laughs> so if I die right now, well, I leave the body here because the body is just what we have collected from this planet, it has to go back. It's just a material that you picked up to walk through this planet, to do activity in this planet, but the life that you are is still contained in your karmic bubble. Life itself is not yours. That we are referring to as consciousness or life is not yours, it is always there. But you have captured this much. But the profoundness of your experience is determined by how much life you have captured, how significant you feel when you sit here, not in the context of society, not with reference to somebody else, not comparing myself to somebody and saying I'm bigger than somebody. But when you simply sit here, this is why closing eyes is so important. When you close your eyes, you shut off the world. When you sit here, what is the significance of your existence? This is determined by how much life you capture. In your experience, you are phenomenally significant because you captured such an immense possibility of life. So once this happens, now it is held together by this karmic bubble or let us say it's a kind of a software. Most of the software may be gathered unconsciously, but it is a certain kind of software which holds this together. Even if we die, the body gets left here, discerning mind goes with the body, rest of the information and this is already there. But now because there is no discerning mind, this bubble cannot go where it wants to go. Now it will just go by its tendencies. It's very beautifully described. In the yogic culture, we call these tendencies as vasanas. The word vasana literally means smell. So it depends what kind of smell it has. Accordingly, it gets drawn to certain things. Accordingly, it will draw certain things towards itself. Depending upon how vibrant this karma is, accordingly, it stays in a limbo for that kind of period. If it has already become very feeble, it will try to find another form, physical form. If it is not become feeble, it exists by itself for a certain period of time. Time is a concern for us only because we have a physical body. If we did not have a physical body, we can sit here for ten thousand years, there's no problem. So once you don't have a physical body, the time-space experience is not the same. But still, the experience of being pleasant or unpleasant is still there. Because at the moment of leaving, in case he is in a certain mode, whatever the mode is, let's say he's in fear mode right now. Now once he loses the discriminatory mind, now there's no control over the fear. See, many times fear arises in your life. Because of your discriminatory mind, you'll say, that's okay, but that it's not like this. You'll reason and try to get out of it. If there is no discriminatory mind, it just snowballs into paranoia. Paranoia not like as human… living human beings know. Paranoia which grows into a million, billion folds because there's complete absence of discriminatory mind. 
But suppose you create pleasantness at that moment of death, now this pleasantness also multiplies into a millionfold over, because there is no discriminatory mind. Whether it's sweetness or bitterness, pleasantness or unpleasantness, all of this can take on a big proportion if only there is no discriminatory mind. So even when people are living, very little of their discriminatory mind they're using, mostly they're functioning by tendency which is unfortunate. But once you have shed the body, there is no other way. You will only go by tendency. Unless you've reached a certain level of awareness where you can carry a certain dimension of awareness with you. Otherwise, whatever is your quality will snowball into something very big. If it snowballs into unpleasantness, we say he's in hell. If it snowballs into pleasantness, we say he's in heaven. So heaven and hell are not geographical places. It is a state that somebody gets into. So if there is substantial amount of information still stored, which is the karma, the karmic substance is still strong, then once, suppose you left out of feebleness of energy, that is you became old, energies became feeble and it rested for some time. So this kind of life energy just rests for some time without too much activity. But suppose the energies did not become feeble, but you broke the body by accident or suicide or somebody shot you in the head or you… somebody broke your heart, whichever way <laughs> you broke the body and you left, energies were still intense. Now, this will take a long time for it to become feeble without the body and the mind. If you had a regular body and the discriminatory mind, let us say you would have worked out your karma in the next ten years and made the energies feeble. But now that you don't have a body, these ten years may telescope into a thousand years. So this is the reason always they told you, you should never die of suicide, you never should be murdered, accidental death is bad, because now your limbo situation is long, very, very long, because you have no discriminatory mind, we don't know which way you will roll, and the chances of finding another womb are very little, because you're in a certain level of intensity, you cannot find. So unless you come to the right level of intensity, you are not suitable to take on a new body. So if you died of old age, energies became feeble, you just… everything is fine with your body, you went to bed and you never woke up. Such a person may get back into another womb within forty-eight hours. But a person who died by breaking his body, either by accident or otherwise, this person may take we don't know how long, depending upon what level of intensity and how much of the information is still there, unworked out.